The earlier days of YouTube were a special time. Right now, we know it as one of the most popular websites ever, but in the late 2000s and early 2010s, less people used it. This made some big videos stand out from others, ones that would absolutely blow up in views and get everyone talking. The simple term for these is viral videos, since they spread around faster than expected. One of the great things about early YouTube is that it was all about the creators behind these videos, not focused on monetization or big companies taking the spotlight. This paved the path for user-driven videos to get really popular, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. Sometimes there were one-hit wonders, and other times there were full-on channels that gathered an insane amount of views. That should be a good segue to a name you probably forgot about, or who knows, maybe you've never even heard of it, Annoying Orange. The concept of this web series is relatively simple. It features a talking orange with a live-action face as he gets in wacky situations with his talking food friends. Everyone has their own unique personality, of course, but the star of the show is annoying. Really annoying. He'll do whatever it takes to troll everyone around him, whether it be the actual characters within the videos, or the real life people watching his videos at home. You see, this dude would not go away. He would appear in everything you can possibly think of. If there's a trend, Annoying Orange is there. If there's a popular game, Annoying Orange will play it. If anything exists, you will see this face. As dumb as the concept is, this is still one of the biggest early challenges channels on YouTube, and it's important to look at so we can get a sense of the platform back then. A few years after Annoying Orange became one of the most recognizable channels, something interesting happened. Anyone tuning into Cartoon Arc starting in 2012 was in for a surprise when they saw the Talking Orange greet them on TV. Prepare! We're gonna be on TV! Orange, you amazed? <laughs> Some call him funny. Rip the what you say? Some call him courageous. I am the good sir Chusalot. Some even call him talented. <laughs> But most call him annoying. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You thought you could escape, but he's watching you everywhere you go. CN executives saw potential with the whole idea of Fruit and his friends going on adventures because this was a full-on 11-minute episode series that had its own theme song and everything. The show follows the lives of Orange and his friends, Pear, Passion Fruit, Midget Apple, Marshmallow, Apple, Grandpa Lemon, and the sometimes antagonistic Grapefruit. The show diverges from the YouTube series in that the Fruit Gang live on a fruit stand in a supermarket called Danebo's rather than in creator Dane Bodenheimer's kitchen. The high fructose adventures of Annoying Orange was only supposed to be a few episodes long, but then Cartoon Arc gave it one quick look and picked it up for more stories. It would go on to air two full seasons, each with 30 episodes, which is honestly kind of surprising to me. You'd assume a show that adapts popular videos online wouldn't do great with the shift to TV, but it didn't even perform that bad. One look at the ratings, and you'll realize that there was an audience tuning in. But with that in mind, was the quality of the show even good? That that depends on who you ask, but let's just say a lot of people weren't happy. It makes sense why so many people thought this was bad. When you take short form content that's best left on YouTube and then extend it to have a longer runtime, it's really hard to keep things fresh. Not only that, but the show always parodied other things and didn't really bring new ideas to the table that would make it worth a watch. You also have a main character who's screaming all the time. I mean, the entire thing is that he's annoying. It's kind of balanced out with some of his close food friends as they can be voices of reason, but this is still hard to watch. The title of the show is telling the truth. These are very high fructose adventures where new things keep happening and you don't get a break. It's fast paced, random, and clearly meant for younger audiences. But okay, while I'm personally not a fan of what I've seen from the show, I'm willing to admit something. There is some charm to be found here. What I mean is that this is a remnant of the old YouTube. You don't see many TV cartoons like it because they usually don't follow the classic internet random humor. It's kind of nostalgic. One of the things I'm most surprised by is that this show was bigger than you'd think. Just look at the special guest list on the wiki. It's absolutely insane to me that so many big names stepped in to play random characters. For example, Tom Kenny plays Coconut, Weird Al plays himself, and Tony Hawk is a character. What? I can seriously stare at this list for a while, and I will still never understand this. I guess it just goes to show how big Annoying Orange was. This may not go down as one of Cartoon Eric's best shows, in fact, probably the opposite, but it's it's still a reminder of the older days of YouTube. When a random guy who makes random videos about random fruit can make it this big, it proves that anyone has a chance to go far.
Let's take a refresher from the bad stuff and talk about an amazing cartoon. It's a little show called Adventure Time. I doubt you've heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but seriously, it's become a behemoth in Western animation. What not as many people realize is that this actually started out as a web short. This is where we were introduced to the post-apocalyptic land of Ooh, with these happy characters ready to have some fun, and the whole thing just seems super welcoming. When it was uploaded online in the late 2000s, it ended up exploding in views. People loved the charm that Finn and Jake provided on their first adventure. Nowadays, we know just how much this short led to, but it's a good reminder that online videos and web shows count for more than you know. The fact that one of the biggest modern cartoons got its start here, and went further because it became viral, is a reminder of how powerful the internet can be. It's something that rings true back then, and even applies in some cases today. When we're talking about viral videos that became awful TV shows, there's a certain high-pitched live-action character that I can't ignore, even if I want to. I never expected to say these words out loud in 2020, but welcome to the world of Fred Figglehorn. Like him or not, this is the definition of classic YouTube. The biggest videos would get anywhere from 10 to 90 million views, and he was one of the most well-known content creators back in the day. These were all short adventures featuring a kid who talked to the camera in a very high-pitched voice, doing basically whatever he wanted. At one one point on his channel, there was even a crossover that the universe couldn't handle, one far bigger than the Avengers. Knock knock! Who is there? Knock knock! Who's there? Knock knock! I'm gonna squeeze you to death if you don't tell me who's there! Much like the Annoying Orange, everyone knew Fred. Nickelodeon saw dollar signs in their future, so they decided to team up with Lucas Cruikshank and bring these adventures to TV. My new show is coming to Nickelodeon February 20th! How hacking awesome is that? Ah! Wanna see a clip? Click my face. Do it. No, Fred. I, I don't wanna. The first episode came out in January 2012, and then everything ended in August of the same year. Honestly, there's nothing I can think of that makes this show good, other than the same idea of it being a remnant of early YouTube. One of the biggest reasons this couldn't work is because almost every Fred video was just around three minutes long. It's easy to watch since you're not listening to the annoying chipmunk voice for a long time, but that all changes on TV. Audiences just couldn't take it anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, there was also a trilogy of full Fred movies for Nickelodeon, but uh, let's just not talk about them. At the end of the day, even though viral video TV shows can be bad, I can understand why the executives gave the green light. The older days of YouTube may not have had as many users as right now, but everyone was following a smaller number of creators. Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon saw potential because there was already an established audience for these creators. Seems like a win-win, at least until they actually premiered and nobody liked them. Now I may look back at Annoying Orange and Fred in disgust, but I still had fun watching them as a kid. If anything, Right now, I can appreciate what they brought to the internet, and that they helped develop the types of videos we would get later on. Anyway, what are your thoughts on all this? Have you even heard of these shows, or is this all new info? Let's talk in the comments. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and comment below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.